from newstalkzb.co.nz. It's Mike Hosking. It's past eight. Who could have imagined, eh, that when a local drama called Shortland Street first got funded by New Zealand on air and began broadcasting on the 25th of May 1992, that it would turn into the long-running hit story that it has? Uh, dramas don't last 20 years. Local production is never that successful, but here we are. Uh, Michael Galvin has played Dr Chris Warner for, um, well, for most of those years, most of the 20 years. He is with us along with uh, producer Stephen Zanowski. Good morning to you and lovely to see you. Thank you. And the warmest me. congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. What did you make of it um, at the beginning, at the very beginning? What, what, what were your expectations? What did you think would happen? We thought it would last maybe a few months at the most. You know, we the, the first episode was not well received and we thought, oh, well, that was an interesting experiment. And that, uh, before it even went to air, there were a lot of people saying, this is too hard. You can't do this. New Zealand doesn't have the resources to make a show like this. It's too demanding. Um, so there were a lot of people kind of willing it to fail before it even started. And when we af- after the response of the first episode, we thought, oh, well, they were right and we were wrong. <laughs> but as it turned but out... But they weren't. Interestingly, <laughs> I was one of those people. And, and it's one of those things I remember strongly and I regret because it was one of those um, spur of the moment sort of things. I, I, and it was a silly thing to say because obviously I was wrong and I've been proven well and truly to be wrong. Uh, but but what made this, in, in, in your light, um, Stephen, what made it different? Why did it last? Why has it worked? Oh, look, I think with um, everything, it comes down to stories. And I think just the fact that we were telling New Zealand stories with very identifiable New Zealand characters uh, that that's that prevailed it wasn't like anything that was coming from overseas it actually spoke to the local audience all right and so you were doing what before the Uh, I was at the Mercury Theatre so yeah. this would have been a big break. You would have gone, my God, here was, I am, primetime TV. Yeah, it was. And I was doing Ladies Night at the Mercury Theatre, and then a, and then a Tennessee Williams play. And when I got cast, I spoke to the, uh, I told the artistic director of the Mercury Theatre, and suddenly he offered me all this theatre work, and he said, Oh no, you don't want to, no, you, you don't want to do TV. No, 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 you're too, it's too, it's too early in your career for that. You'll, you'll learn all these bad habits. And you know, I, and he offered me a year's work of worth work at the theatre, which I turned down. And then two weeks later, the Mercury Theatre folded. So. See, I always have this interesting thing with actors because this is you want regular work because there's so little work for an actor and yet you don't want regular work because you want to stretch yourself and be artistic and do all sorts of weird and wonderful things and yet here you are the Ken Barlow of Shortland Street for yeah. God's sake. No, I'm very, I'm very happy there. I, I, don't, uh, I, I find it very rewarding too from an acting point of view. I know a lot of actors would find that difficult to understand but from an acting point of view I, I love it, it's great. I, I get to do so many things. You know. At what point did it become, uh, I mean it's one thing to get a part, one thing to get a show but then, then you've got a character, is the character going to last the length of the show? I mean plenty have come mm. and plenty have gone in that period of time haven't they? That's true yeah. And so why have you lasted? Um, I don't know it's uh, I, I think the writers feel that they can kind of take Chris anywhere mm-hmm. and I'm willing to go along with that ride and that's what I enjoy about it is, is, is that we, we kind of, I'm forever, you know, exploring new uh, avenues. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. The, to me, it seems to me the characters that work on the show are the ones where the actor takes a real ownership of the character and mm. doesn't worry too much about the difference between them and the character and just gives as much as they, of they as they possibly can of their own personality and their own imagination to that character and, and really kind of claims it. And uh, the writers respond to that and those are the characters that seems to me that, that, that tend to last. There must be a tremendous, Stephen, tremendous amount of pride at South Pacific Pictures to have done oh. this. I mean, and, and you're sort of minding the jewel and the crown, if you like. Look, absolutely. Um and just the buzz that's been going around the building for the past, um, I think, about four months since we were shooting helicopter crashes, even when we started talking yeah. about it, um, there's just been this growing sense of, gosh, this is exciting. And then this week, as sort of the publicity has taken off and as we've gone to air and you know, there's been various parties, um, it's been great. Yeah, everyone, everyone's, everyone's really buzzing out on it and we feel like we're doing something that's um, maybe even a little bit important. Well, it is. I mean, it's, it, 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 well, it's the, it's the most successful drama in New Zealand television history, yeah. isn't, it, isn't it? Oh, in New Zealand television history, certainly. Well, yeah, exactly. What about the slickness of the production? How's that changed over the years? Um, well, every year we try and make it better. I think is you know it, it's still actually running to the same way that it did um, way back twenty years ago. We still sort of run the same systems, but those systems have just sort of honed and improved, and um, we get a lot more bang for our bucks these days. So, in what sense? What's how does it work literally? Monday morning. Uh, look, Monday morning. Uh, well, for me, it's always it, it is a factory in many senses, in that we um, do do the same thing every week in terms of Monday morning I hang out with the storyliners we sort of talk about the stories that are coming up Uh, meanwhile up in the studio there's rehearsals going on there's location shooting happening on location Um, week by week there's various uh, points that we have to hit to get the production line going 
But every week it's a different creative challenge. And every week we are stretching ourselves with what can we do. And we do deliberately, in terms of the writing, uh, stretch this tiny show to say, can we achieve this? What I've noticed about you, Michael, is that you've kept, comparatively speaking, a relatively low profile for your position. Is that, is that, that's not unreasonable? I'm, is it, I mean, you... you yeah, you, I, you, it's you not know. something I, I am terribly interested in or pursued. You know, that but you've done it, if that's what you wanted to pursue, you've done it exceedingly well, haven't oh. you, in that sense? You, you've kept largely below the radar. Yes, yeah. All that scandal in your background, that's never come, <laughs> it's never come out, has it? I mean, no. that, that's been it kept quiet. every now and then. But, but, yeah. but it's largely kept... And that's deliberate on your part, something uh, you've been yeah. able, a, able to do. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the work of, of, of acting. I, li- I, like, I like acting. I'm, I'm not that interested in the other side of it so much no. and you've been able to leave too which has been good you left for a while didn't you didn't yeah you, I, did. I was on it for four years and then i left oh. and i was off it for four years and then i was in i was down and out in london uh doing very little and uh why very would poor. you do that what what is it with actors what what is it with you <laughs> like you've got a job they're paying you the money why go do something and be down and out in london what's the matter well, with you but you know being down and out wasn't my plan my plan was to be a <laughs> God, whatever my, I don't know what my plan was, but I started yeah. writing just as it was announced that Michael was leaving, and we were all saying this was in the third year. Oh, it's the end of Shorten Street. It's not going to go on. <laughs> and I actually wrote your final episode. When, Did you? Yeah, no. And we'll say, oh, we're going to wind it up. We're going to wind it up. And then, of course, it, right? just, it just kept going. Oh, I'm breaking planning. news! You had him leaving forever. It was going to be the we, final. Yeah, and I remember the um, last line I wrote was, "It's uh, so long, folks, from the Warner Brothers." Yeah. <laughs> well, no, he's saying that the show was going to fold. Well, the show was going to fold. Yeah. But it didn't. It didn't keep going. Thank God for that. And so you've been able to come back, which has happened to not just you, but other actors in the program. They've left, yeah. they've done their own thing, they've come back, which is uh, must be a wonderful thing to be able to do, I guess, yeah. mustn't it? It's great. You, you'll get on, I mean, by and large. Yep, yep. Within... No, by, by and large, the, the culture of the place, it's a it's an ensemble culture. There's not a star culture. There, there have been times in my memory where some actors have come on and they've had that star attitude who are they? <laughs> yes. I can tell. they're not there now oh, no. that's such a fair question and I'm so sorry I can't answer no it. that's okay it's alright uh, the reinvention how do you reinvent to drag in new viewers my two eldest at home 10 and 12 they're loving it they lap it up how do you reinvent it to make it um, actually for my wife mm-hmm. For my wife, you said off off air, Mm -hmm. you said off air, I'm saying, 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 they're they're, they're Jackson and Josh big fans, and you're saying, well, there'd be some parental guidance required to watch that program. Uh, Look, I think at their age, certainly I would recommend parental guidance. It's it's a PGR rated show. That's what I'm saying at home, Stephen. That's what I'm saying at home. (laughs) I fully support it. I'm saying that at home. And and, and no no one's listening to me at home. There's no discipline. Anyway, so so how do you reinvent it? How do you keep it Uh, current? Look, again, it's about stories and characters, and um, every couple of years we... um, bring in a few new characters and sort of as characters leave whether they've come to the end of their arc or whether the actor decides to leave we always have to constantly reinvent and as soon as you get new toys in the playground as it were you know it, it takes off again and, and how do you prevent audience. but how do you prevent yourself going nuts and going too far and then going into that area where people go gee this is this jumping is going the off the air jumping the shark <laughs> yeah um i think you have to carefully monitor that and that's part of my job as producer to make sure we don't go too far but then again also um shorten street has had a number of producers over the years and another a number of people who are in charge of the creative um and i think it's important for those people to keep refreshing as well to keep bringing in new ideas and and bringing a new focus to the show could the doctor leave ever or is the doctor so established um, it, it would be no, everyone is dispensable yeah. on the show Every, everyone is, is dispensable we've got no plans yeah. for that but yeah, yeah. Certainly. it's an ensemble it's an ensemble you know it's, it's what they can, one person can go and it doesn't matter you know? don't you have to have an anchor and I go back to that Ken Barlow thing <clears throat> and I love Coronation Street and all that stuff but you've got to have something you've got to have that point where it all began don't you I don't think you do no. really no no, I'd like to believe that. I'd like to believe that. That would make me indispensable, but it's just not true. You don't need that at all. The the memory on the show is is quite short. You know, if something happened kind of two months ago, it, you kind of forget about it, really. Yeah, it, it's it's a very kind of in the moment kind of show. Okay, yeah, but don't I you? Do, but but presumably over time, this goes to the Coronation Street scenario as well. You get it. You get an established audience that that do remember, that do love characters, that do. You, you see what I'm saying? I mean, it's all yeah, very well absolutely. to have your ten and twelve year olds in here today, but but you do have that. I don't know. The yeah, arc, I mean, there, there, I are guess. Some, there are some who have been watching it for 20 years, and you know, we always sort of give a little <laughs> treat to them who uh, have been following Chris Warner for, you know, for the past 20 years. And certainly from the writing point of view, it's exciting to have a character with such established history because you can call on that occasionally. And that's what we're currently doing with Chris. His history is coming back to bite him on the bum. Yeah. Who, who are the great characters, as far as you're concerned, in the show over the last 20 years? Who are the, who are the great ones? Apart oh, from yeah, you remember the villains, really, don't you? <laughs> Greg Feeney, mm-hmm. played by Tim Baum. Yes, that was that was pretty. That was fun. Awesome. I'm, I like Leonard Dodds too. 
played by Martin Shawkash, mm. who's now a movie star. Not um, a villain. Not a villain, no, no kind of quirky character. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and Gina, Gina Rossi, mm-hmm, I liked mm-hmm. her. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. I mean, 20 years is um, is something to be enormously proud of, isn't it? Thank yeah. you. Good on you. Good to see you and all the very best. Michael Gelbin and Stephen Zanowski, producer of Shortland Street. 20-